Hi everyone, I am back with another video in the series Dogs and Art. This is a series where I combine my two main interests in life, which are dogs and art. Because in my professional life, I am an art historian. So I just love talking about how my two main interests sometimes correlate with each other. I have made a video on sighthounds in art, on feral hounds in art, but also I made a video on Frida Carlo and her solo dogs. I thought it was really interesting to see how dogs have impacted artists and how they have played a major role in an artist's life like Frida Carlo. That might be an aspect of her that few people talk about, but that was super important to her. So I thought to follow that up with another artist who loved her dogs more than anything, and that is Georgia O'Keeffe. So Georgia O'Keeffe was born in 1887 and she died in 1986. So she became almost a hundred years. And she's known for painting these huge zoomed in flowers. Early in her career, she painted New York landscapes and skyscrapers. But later on in her career, she moved to New Mexico and it was that landscape that took her career to a new level. Georgia Keefe has been so influential in art history and she's been called mother of American modernism. That's how famous she is. Georgia O'Keeffe basically became a legend on the art scene. When she started in the 1920s, she became known for her independent spirit and became basically a female role model for a lot of other artists at the time. Georgia O'Keeffe's New Mexico paintings coincide with the will to create an American modernism that took a distinct view of the nation to make something that was different from the European modernism. And her looking into the specific landscape of New Mexico was groundbreaking in the will to do so. She became the highest paid woman artist at the time in America, which says a lot about her role in the art scene at the time. And she moved to New Mexico from New York City because she loved the landscape. So on her free time, of course, she wandered around these beautiful sceneries and she took in the world around her. But of course, she didn't walk alone in nature. Not at all. She brought with her her beloved dogs, of course. Her first pet was actually a cat. And then she had a large black French poodle, but that dog died when it was only two years old. So it was not long lived in her life. But three years after she moved to New Mexico, this new breed would come into her life and change her life forever. And that was the Chow Chow. These dogs stole her heart and her first ones were Bo and Chia. During her lifetime, she would own up to six Chow Chows and she described them as little people and she treated them that way. They were her beloved friends and companions and she always brought them with her. This is a quote from a letter to one of her friends. Bo and Chia are maybe my best friends here. I enjoy them very much. The male lies on my window seat now with his legs stretched straight out behind him, looking like a fine big caterpillar. They sleep in my room at night and in the day are always just outside the door. Bo or Bobo or Bo as she referred to him was the favorite of all O'Keeffe's canine friends. He was big with a strong, smooth coat that she really admired. She also described him as the town boss and he had a reputation around the neighborhood, so to speak. Sadly, Bobo died when he was hit by a truck. O'Keefe mourned his loss and 
buried him under the cedar tree and wrote the following. I like to think that probably he goes running and leaping through the white hills alone in the night. She loved him very much. Her final companion was a red Xiao Xiao named Jingo and he died just a short period before she did. O'Keefe made a lot of sketches and took a lot of photographs of her Chow Chows. They were an inspiration to her, even though we don't see them in her final pieces as much as we did with Frida Kahlo. She also wrote a lot about them and how they made her feel. And she wrote this. Bo and Shia astonish and amuse me. They seem to belong to Adobe, a snowy world. So she has this love for them and she writes about them. She photographs them. You can tell that these are her best friends. So what is a Chow Chow? They are one of the world's oldest dog breeds and they originated in China. Their Chinese name means puffy lion dog, which is very suitable if you ask me. The breed is very loyal, protective and independent, which seems perfect for an artist like Georgia O'Keeffe. It seems like they fit her personality very well. The most unique feature with a Chow Chow you probably know is their tongue, which has a blue black tone to it. They also have a very thick coat, which is double coated. We can come in a range of colors from blue to red. Did you know that another famous Xiao Xiao owner was Sigmund Freud? He apparently brought them into therapy sessions because he felt like dogs could sense human emotions and see through characteristics of a person. And I couldn't agree more. I think dogs have a fantastic ability to understand us humans. Another famous person who had chow chows is apparently Martha Stewart. I didn't know that. Unfortunately, her dog died in a kennel fire. Georgia O'Keeffe used to go out in nature to find her motifs for her artworks, but in the summers, it was too hot for her dogs to be out in the summer heat. So she basically stopped going out on car trips to find motifs because she couldn't bear to leave her dogs at home alone. She needed to have them attached to her hip at all times. She also said that she couldn't install a new heater in her house because the place where the heater would go was the favorite sleeping spot of her chow chows and she couldn't bear to take away that spot for them. In 1970, her eyesight started to fail her, which led her to lay down white carpets in her studio just so she could see her dark chow chows better. There is actually a sculpture of Georgia O'Keeffe and her dogs made by the sculptor Marisol. When she was going to portray the artist, she couldn't leave out the chow chows. So in 1982, a few years before Georgia O'Keeffe died, Marisol did a sculpture with O'Keeffe and two of her chow chows. As they said in the breed description, chow chows are loyal, protective and independent. And as I said, they suited Georgia O'Keeffe very well. And she wrote in her diary, it seemed to be my mission in life to wait on a dog. I just love to see how dogs have played such an important role in an artist's life, how they have been inspirations, companions, and basically creative muses for their owners. Isn't that amazing? I also find it interesting that artists choose these rare breeds, these old breeds like the Sholo and the Chow Chow. I would love to see Malik as my muse. I mean, I created this YouTube channel because I got him. So dogs probably have the possibility to inspire us a great deal. So now you know the story of Georgia O'Keeffe and her Chow Chows. I will do some more research and see if I can find more artists to include in this series. But until next time, be inspired by your dog, take
take photos, write a poem. So until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and be inspired by your dog.